this much or more than three years ago. Thank you. Okay. Uh, welcome back. Okay, what we're going to do now is uh, move into draft two of document nine, uh, which is up on the board, I think. Nope, not yet. Good. Ah. Well, it wasn't two seconds ago. Okay. And this is the, uh, the document on WMO strategic plan and, uh, and monitoring evaluation of the HWRP. So if we look at what we have in this document, okay, a few changes. Nothing in the text itself, and the changes are in the draft recommendation. And you'll remember there was no resolution with this, just a recommendation. So this is the uh, CHY contribution to the formulation of the WMO strategic plan. Um, under considering, there is an addition, requests the president of CHY to ensure that the contribution of the commission's activities toward the integrated service-oriented strategic priorities of WMO are clearly communicated to the Executive Council so that the essential role of hydrology is understood and appropriately influences the strategic plan for 2020 to 2023. And then we move to recommend, recommends, and under one, the wording now reads that water issues be given a higher visibility in the strategic planning 2020 to 2023 by elevating them to the level of a strategic priority while recognizing their cross-cutting relevance. And you'll remember the discussion we had on this yesterday. And then recommends two carryovers to the next page. And what we've done is condensed the long list down such that now A, reads innovative ways to address the decline of observing networks and weak human and technical capacity of NHSs to collect, store, analyze hydrological data through GHSF and YCOS and provide, and this is new wording, and provide relevant services to the society with particular emphasis on the support to the development of innovative technologies in hydrology and hydrometry that is big data, citizen observatories, crowdsourcing, low cost, that should be cost instruments without the S. Remote sensing and products based on satellite data, et cetera. And then B becomes hydrological information systems and promotion of data exchange, development of WHO's and support to NHS's active participation and contribution to it. C becomes design, develop, and delivery of tailored hydrological services based on weather and climate services for addressing increasing pressure on water resources due to population growth, urbanization increase, climate variability and change, water scarcity, land use changes, and emerging requirements from international agreed actions. And then four, item D becomes advancing members' capabilities of providing early warning of various hydrological hazards, in particular by issuing impact-based forecasting and risk-based warnings and supporting decision makers under uncertainty conditions. And that concludes uh, the changes.
what we're going to do is, is show a, a final version of what we just went through without all the spaghetti on it that just makes it easier to see. Okay, we're showing this to make it easy to, to view, but if, we, if there's suggested comments, we'll have to go back to the previous version to make those comments on. So, so Claudio will go up to, um, yeah. So we've got noting, we've got considering, that doesn't change. We've got a new change here under request the president. So this is the full statement there. And then under recommends, we've condensed this long list that we had before down to four items. And the first one, yes. recommends one is new, that water issues be given a higher visibility in the strategic plan by elevating them to the level of a strategic priority while recognizing their cross-cutting relevance. Oh yes, the UK. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I think we all agree that water issues are important. Um, and we see that water has an essential role in most of the areas of the WMO priorities. So what we're wondering might be useful to give some more clarity to Exec Council about what we mean by suggesting a priority around water issues. I think if it just goes up as water issues, I'm not sure they'll really know what to do with that when they're sort of developing the plan. So um, we would suggest that something along the lines of support for sustainable water management but might be an appropriate wording for Executive Council at this point, particularly because that emphasises the important role national meteorological and hydrological services have in contributing to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then over the development of the strategic plan in the next kind of couple of years, um, then it would be up for yourself to work with Exec Council kind of to develop the justification around 
that wording and put the kind of the more details in. So I think we've, we would suggest an additional point, which would become the new... Oh, it's gone. There we are. Um, a new point two. We have, we have to go back to the other document at this point, so just bear with us. Hold it for a second. Okay, Jane. Thank you. So our suggested text for new point two would be that Executive Council give consideration to establishing gives takes into Um, then I guess it would be establishing with that wording. Open quote marks, support for sustainable water management. Close quotes. As a strategic priority, emphasizing WMOs important role in contributing to the water related UN SDGs thank you Thank you for that. Since we're on this version, uh, are there other comments? Did you see what we just did, Jane? We just, under the recommends, we made recommends to executive council, just so that it's clear. Other comments? Under recommends? Yeah, I just want to make sure that all the members agree with this second item here. <coughs> Actually, this is... In, in some respects, I would consider this very, very good because it then puts the onus back on executive council because we're giving them a direct uh, recommendation. Okay. Understood. Understood. So now we're uh, underneath of that, and we've got uh, that. The so this will become three, and then um, so here are the items. We've got this new item: inno innovative ways to address the decline of observing networks. B is. Um, a continuation of what was previously item D, it's now B, hydrological information systems and promotion of data exchange, et cetera. 
And then under C, design, development, and delivery of tailored hydrological services based on weather and climate and services. This statement is designed to get at that discussion we had the other day where Yanda and Helka uh, made an intervention talking about hydroclimate services. This way we keep it in the context of hydrological services, but we do it specifically in the context of reconciling it with both weather and climate services. So I think we then incorporate everything but keep it in a, in a more specific framework for our purposes of hydrological services. And then finally, uh, under item D, uh, advancing members' capabilities of providing early warning of various hydrological hazards, in particular by issuing impact-based forecasting and risk-based warnings and supporting decision makers under uncertainty conditions. So with these modifications to the document, I'll open the floor for, um, for discussion. Czech Republic, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. And concerning item C, I'm aware that it was written after the discussion, but personally, I am not very happy with the formulation that hydrological services are based on weather and climate services. They probably use the information from climate and weather services in addition to the information from uh, their own hydrological network, but uh, the formation that they are based on uh, weather and climate services, then this is not convenient for me. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, would the wording work better if we said uh, tailored hydrological services in consideration of weather and climate services? Okay. Okay, so let me suggest another adjustment here. So this would then read tailored hydrological services in consideration of weather and climate data and information. Is that better? Does that work for everyone? Thanks for that. I have to accept it. <laughs> I cannot find the way. Of okay, th does this wording work for everyone, though? Are there any questions about the wording? Because I know it's difficult to see here. You, you know, I can accept them, then go back. To okay, do that. Okay. In the meantime, while this is going on, other comments? There. Ah, so here it is now. So the reads is design development and delivery of tailored hydrological services in consideration of weather and climate data and information for addressing increasing pressure. So are we comfortable with this wording? Probably better represents what it is that we're trying to uh, characterize here. Okay. okay. Um, 
other points. Yes, China, please. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Regarding the item D, uh, China proposed a modif uh, minor modification. Advancing uh, members' capability of providing early warning. Of, we propose advancing members' capability of providing timely and accurate uh, prediction and early warning because we not uh, early warning is very important, but we for decision making accurate and the timely forecasting is much more important. So, yeah, timely and accurate prediction and early warning. Um, thank you. Gio, is that fine? Does that wording work for everyone? Okay. Others? Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other requests for interventions. Are we um, ready to move forward with adopting this, this document? And we, I think we really did try to do as uh, thorough a job in representing everyone's interests, uh, but at the same time condensing that long list of things that we had. So hearing no objection, Okay, document nine is adopted. Okay, we've reached, uh, we've reached a point where the uh, selection committee has in fact done what the commission asked of it. It now has its recommendations prepared. And what I'd like to do is, is ask the chairman of the, uh, of the committee, Jean-Francois Cantin, to come up and um, give us the results of the selection committee's work. JF. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like uh, first to uh, remind the uh, to the uh, commission, the um, composition of the selection committee. There were Songran, Song, Songkran Agzorn from Thailand, Maryam Alauri from Morocco, Rocio Sanchez from Venezuela, Christina Eklund, Eklund from Sweden, John Fenwick from New Zealand, and myself, Jean-Francois Quentin from Canada. We've had uh, three meetings, animated discussions, and I'd like to thank the uh, Secretariat and the President for uh, their support. Whenever we had questions, we uh, were provided answers. So thank you for that. The committee considered um, as uh, 
as uh, not rules but as guidelines, first the competency of the candidates. We also consider the gender balance of the uh, AWG committee, the regional area balance as well. We kept in mind that uh, uh, the future advisory working group will need to ensure continuity uh, in the work that will be undertaken in the next uh, four years. In, with respect to the proposed uh, future com um, shape of the, uh, the uh, AWG, which is uh, measurement, monitoring, and info systems, hydrological application, product, and services, as well as uh, coordination and implementation support. So the AWG member that the selection committee uh, proposes, suggests to the commission are Yuri Simonov from Russia, Narendra Tuteja from Australia, Jan Danhelka from the Czech Republic, Ririn Kim, sorry if the pronunciation is not good, from the Republic of Korea, Marcello Uriburu from Argentina, Tom Kaniki, again sorry if the pronunciation is not good, from Uganda, Yanking, Yanking Yang from China, and the uh, selection committee, considering the size of uh, the, the workload of the um, advisory working group, also recommends that uh, uh, an eight member be added. And uh, we uh, identified that uh, Ms. Janice Fulford from USA, who's a highly competent uh, uh, individual, uh, would be a good addition to ensure continuity. Um, and also it helps uh, the gender balance. So uh, those are the uh, the candidates that we recommend the uh, Commission to uh, consider. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. no, no, only one. I said, did I send two? You said two. Apologies, I said, apparently I said two additions, one additions. The total number of AWG member on top of the President and the Vice President would then be eight instead of seven as it is right now. Thank you, Jean-Francois. Okay, so that's the recommendation that's come from the uh, selection committee. I'll open the floor at this point for any comments that uh, the members want to make. Egypt, please. الدكتور أشرف زكي هو الدكتور أشرف زكي هو مستشار هيدرولوجي للرئيس الـ AR1 وأنا مستغرب إن هو ما اتخدش داخل المجموعة Could you repeat the name again? Please. No, no, just to explain, Dr. Rashov Zaghi is the regional hydrological advisor of Region 1, but he was not a candidate. He, his candidature was not submitted to the advisory working group. So it, the reason why it was, not, it was not considered because it was never candidated from Egypt to this. Perhaps you are confused with the, he is already the, the chair of the working group of hydrology of region one and the regional hydrological advisor. But this nomination was never sent for a position in the advisory working group. So no, that's. And as a point of protocol, we 
choose not to have a, a person who's a regional hydrological advisor also serve as a member of the advisory working group because if they were to do that, then when we come to our AWG meetings, when the regional hydrological advisor attends, there wouldn't be two voices from that region. There would only be one voice because it would just be one person fulfilling both roles. So the regions benefit from having an individual who's separated from the regional hydrological advisor. So, but his name was not put forward as a member under any circumstances. So that's why there was no listing. Other comments? Germany, please. Just as a protocol, is it possible to uh, uh, screen the names that were proposed? Other comments? United States? Ah, right. Bill, hold on a second. Um, Italy and then United States. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we are suggesting now to propose eight candidates for the advisory working group instead of uh, the seven that were uh, uh, instead on the seven in the, that uh, were um, are proposing in the past. So, would you please uh, to clarify how the structure will modify? So the eight candidates uh, to which group will uh, join? Will. In some respects, I think it's a little bit unspecified at this point because we've got these two major areas, the, the, the measurement and monitoring side and then the application side. And um, you know, it may not be that you want four people in one and four people in another. You may want five and three. It, it, it all depends on what the, the workload uh, under each is, is, is arranged. And so it's possible uh, that, that at this point we, we won't know, uh, and we might not know until we get to our first AWG meeting, which box each individual will fit into. Uh, it's all going to depend on the expertise of the individuals that we have and then the specific jobs that have to be done. Th does that help? Okay, thank you. Okay, U.S., you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. As we have watched the activities of the commission described for the last intercessional period, and we have worked yesterday and today on the extensive plans for the next period, uh, including the commission's adoption of a new um, large pilot project, which is 
very ambitious. We wonder if there is enough capability and time represented in the AWG as currently planned and whether there may need to be consideration of a ninth member to handle such a large workload for the next four years. Thank you for that. Um, yes, we, the commission, has the decision-making authority to decide how many, uh, how many members it wants on its advisory working group. You decide. Uh, this is your advisory working group. If in consideration of the workload that we're facing, you feel that we need to have a, uh, another member, particularly for this particular task, which is one that's going to be a fairly time-consuming and significant task, um, we can accommodate that, and the Secretariat has the wherewithal to make that happen, so it's possible that, uh, that we could do that. Korea, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Could you change my name? There is an error with my name, H-W-I-N-R-I-N. H-W-I-N-R-I-N. Please delete R-I-R-I. R I N H W I R I N. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, and we apologize. <laughs> In response to uh, the U.S. Uh, delegation, <clears throat> the selection committee has uh, considered this uh, this possibility as well that uh, uh, perhaps a uh, ninth member could be added. Uh, we were already extending <clears throat> from seven to eight. We were not sure if the commission is ready to go there, uh, but we have effectively discussed uh, candidates for eventuality in the, the eventuality of uh, a ninth member of the AWG, leaving that to the Commission to decide whether or not they want the, uh, a ninth member. Just as a point of clarification, JF, if you were to, if, if you would have decided on the moment to have a ninth member, did you choose a person that you would put in that role among, from among the candidates you had available to you? Yes, Mr. President. That person would be Harry Dixon from the UK. Germany, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, considering uh, the uh, valuable contributions that the UK had put forward, and especially also through Harry Dixon himself, um, with regard to the proposal that found extensive reflection in our documents, uh, we would concur with the suggestion to have a ninth member, uh, Harry Dixon, in, in that position because I do not see anyone else who is so much deeply into the matter that has been proposed and which is now embedded in our documents. Thank you. Thank you for that, Wolfgang. Other comments on this issue and this proposal? Czech Republic, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We would like to support the statement of Germany because uh, uh, the new activity really demands for, for a man who can organize that, and we are pretty sure that Harry is the right one for that. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Do I have a sense then that there's general agreement that the AWG for the upcoming intersessional period should be expanded from seven members to nine members? And if so, the names that were selected are, the, uh, are agreeable to the members. Are we in agreement on this? I mean, these are the individuals who will represent your interests and the, the full commission's interests. Uh, as we go forward over the next four years. 
All right, I'm not seeing any objections. So uh, I think the conclusion here is that we will have nine members of the advisory working group supporting the vice president and myself. Uh, and the names that have been uh, identified by the selection committee will be those that we, uh, that we, that, that form the committee. And uh, we'll agree to that, and I'm not gonna hammer it at this point because we'll hammer it when I hammer the whole document. So we'll just include it in the text of the document at this point. Um, And so at that point, what I'd like to do is, is thank Jean-Francois and every member of the uh, selection committee. They had a list of almost 20 candidates to deal with. They had a, an extremely outstanding group of talent to choose from. It was not an easy job, and they spent a lot of time and energy trying to do it and do it right. And so uh, we all owe them a, a debt of gratitude for, for what they did. JF, thank you so much. Well done. And I think we're ready then to, um, to work through the other changes that uh, we have in document eight that uh, the secretariat was working on uh, over the lunch period. And uh, here to walk us through those um, those adjustments to the document um, is Bruce Stewart, former commission president. Bruce? Uh, thank, thank you, Harry. Um, well, d during the, the lunch period, a, a, a small group of uh, members of the commission got together and, and went through the, the current status of the draft documents for, for the meeting um, and se selected from that any additional item that this group has decided to put on the, um, the task list, if you like, for the AWG. <clears throat> and I suppose it's just as well you've added another two members to the AWG because you'll see you've, you've actually added quite a reasonable additional workload there for them. Um, so in, in, in general, I suppose, there were a number of things that were very much a continuation of, of the liaison with certain groups and the group felt that that was covered through paragraph 1.1 with a few additions, and we'll go through those, those in a second. Um, there were some that related specifically to the issue of private-public partnership, and that, um, that has been covered off in, in terms of an activity that's under the, uh, well, we'll see as, as we go through, but un under the Secretariat, but to liaise with the AWG. Um, because it suggested in the document that it would be using a, a member from the OPASH and the activities within that area are by the AWG with the assistance from the OPASH. So there are a number of things that just sort of fell very neatly into the current categories. Perhaps the, the most important, not important ones, that's not fair, the, the ones that we had to think more carefully about was the, um, the community of practice on droughts and so you'll see that there's a specific reference to, to that in the document, but also the, um, the uh, pilot WMO Global Hydrology Status and Outlook System is, was another, I suppose, major topic that has been agreed to at the, at the meeting. Um, I, I think, sort of, Mr Chairman, it's probably easier if we, if we just work through the document and see where, where changes have been proposed. I would sort of point out also that anybody that had already provided text on this um, document, we have endeavoured to include that in, in the draft at this stage as well. Um, I would point out that it is a, a working paper, it's not a draft two. Draft two would obviously come back um, tomorrow morning, I would assume, if, unless you adopt it this afternoon, which you may not want to do. <laughs> so if you, if you like, we could uh, run through the changes paragraph by paragraph. Oh, they're here. Sorry? What do you mean? Where do you want? Which one? <laughs> change by change. Yeah, just go change by change. Okay. 
Okay, so the first change um, was the suggestion that we really need to give due consideration to gender balance within the nomination of experts for the OPASH, and also there was a suggest suggestion for changing the text there and to re refer to the availability and participation of the members of the, uh, the OPASH rather than the voluntary contribution. So that was to cover those two issues that were raised. Just, I think, go through and we can come back. Is that right? Yep. yep. Um, the, in paragraph 1.1, 1 .1, there was specific um, mention made to um, coordination or, or co collaboration or liaison with the Global Climate Observing System, GCOS, and also the Global Cryosphere Watch Project Office. So, those two groups were included in that paragraph to, to enable or just remind, if you like, the AWG that those things ne needed to happen. Do you move, move through? Um, with respect to the, um, uh, the B, there was a, a recommendation or a, require, a request that the AWG consider developing open source and community of practice solutions to promote the transfer of technology we felt that that fitted within the, the B part, if you like, of, of the, um, I think it's, what's it, the implementation uh, group. And so we, we renamed that category to capacity development. It had been ETR and um, uh, included that as, as part of that activity. So if you move down a bit, thanks. Um, this is where we added a specific um, additional data point. It was uh, at the, the suggestion or the request for the AWG to establish a, a small task team to prepare a report with regard to the evolving role of GRDC, EGRAC and HydroLayer and liaise with the president of CCL. Why are you changing it? With respect to the involvement of the GPCC. So we created a new topic there called data centres. Thank you. Um, with respect to the community, um, a community practice of, on droughts, um, the, the suggestion there was that such a community of practice be established and then as it evolved to see what came out of it, if you like, for, for the Commission to respond to in terms of drought matters. And we felt that the easiest way of addressing that was to identify it as, as a possible mechanism to achieve the water resources management and drought activities associated with 14A. So we, we just included there a sentence that said, this could be achieved through the establishment of a community of practice on droughts. So make, leaving that, that open and, and as an option for, for the Commission to go ahead with. Thank you. Um, we, I suppose this is one that we sort of tasked long and hard over, uh, over lunch, exactly how to um, position the, the, the Global Hydrological Status and Outlook uh, initiative or proposal and it, it, at the end of the day it was just easier to, to have it as a separate additional task. We did try to um, in, intertwine it with the EHP um, process but there was so much happening in that already that you know the, there's an obvious link but that um, we, we, we've kept the two separate at this point in time. It may be that we should have sort of indicated that there should be a, a, a linkage between the two of them and that, and that could be added if you if so decide, Mr Chairman. Um, moving down, there was a, a, a request concerning the common alerting protocols and we've included that under the, the DRR, DRR topic. Uh, the next one was the, the, the changes requested or proposed by um, the Russian Federation. So they, they came purely um, from the floor, not as part of the, the, the review process. Uh, if you want to keep moving down. Again, these were just um, changes that were made from the floor this morning. Uh, and, and the one on uh, suspended uh, transport, so, um, again, that, that was from the, the floor this morning from um, Italy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, under the activities for, as I mentioned before, um, sorry, 
one thing that, that did, did, sorry, stay with that F if you could, Claudio. One, one thing that has occurred that's sort of made this a little bit more difficult is that quite correctly the Commission has requested the AWG to do certain things, but in effect it would probably be the Secretariat that did these things with, with guidance from the AWG. So we, with respect to, for instance, there is in the documentation about looking at all the regulatory material, and this group has asked the AWG to do it, um, and the AWG has said the Secretariat's going to do that anyway. So what we've done there is just sort of make sure that on those topics we include with li and liaise with the AWG as required. Obviously that would happen anyway, it's just with these specific issues they were mentioned both within, within the documentation and it was just to keep it clean and neat. Public pi par private partnership, uh, that came out of document three and is to respond to the request of uh, resolution 67. We've got here Congress 17, but I wasn't sure there whether it was Congress or EC because 67 sounded a lot of resolutions for Congress. I think it was CG7. Okay, you're right. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, what I'd like to do at this point is go ahead and open the floor for discussion on these changes that's been that, that based on the discussion this morning and the changes that we've incorporated in. Um, I'll open the floor for the members to uh, to comment on these things. Make sure that they captured the sense of what you wanted captured, and this is important because it does represent what it is we're going to do for the next four years. So it's incumbent upon the members to be absolutely positive that this uh, reflects their wishes. Italy, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, could you go back to page seven where the sediment things was? Yeah. Yeah, actually we sent a note. Um, we propose to say um, manual on sediment transport measurement uh, suspended at Medload because they're, they're still suspended there <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, just that. Thank you. Yeah, we, we also, as, as agreed, we also modified the uh, um, resolution 4111, <laughs> okay, which, uh, is, which was the one with the manual. Now, now it says exactly like this, yes, with the correction. Will that be okay as long as it's there? Okay. Yes, Australia. Thanks, Mr. President. And uh, we thank the members for the, um, uh, the changes that are going to this. Some of the discussion that has occurred on this item has now raised some inconsistencies in the, uh, in the um, details that are in here. Uh, examples are that uh, seven AWG members uh, are mentioned. Uh, a maximum of six activities has now been exceeded under uh, one of the proposed groups and also the groups still have within them the suggestion that there would be three AWG members for each group. So uh, we would suggest that as part of the review that the Secretariat uh, adjust the numbers and descriptions to uh, fit with the discussion that has occurred on this document. Yes, thank you for that. And actually what I was going to propose to the members was that at, up at the beginning, uh, under the resolution that we have to consider here, under Decides 4, where it says to invite the following experts to serve, off to the right-hand side behind each name, it says which task they seem to be assigned to. What I would propose at this point is that we just delete those assignments for now so that at the first advisory working group meeting, we can actually make an appropriate allocation. 
So, um, but, but you're right. That is something that needs to be contemplated. Others? Okay, we're not deciding anything here. I mean, what we're doing is, is the floor is open for discussion. We're going to make accommodations for things. Um, I can tell you now we're going to take a break at some point because we have to be able to make all the adjustments to this document properly. And then when we come back later this afternoon, we'll have the document uh, up on the screen for everybody to look at and see in a form that makes a whole lot more sense. Czech Republic, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I apologize that I didn't rise it during the drafting team uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, but I didn't spot it. Uh, under the item of hydrological applications, uh, we have uh, the name of the activity, which is C now, uh, extended hydrological prediction. I would propose to change it to hydrological seasonal prediction to be consistent with uh, technical regulations and the terminology used in hydroclimate document. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that, Jan. Australia. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, this may or may not result in a change, but I noticed the uh, section 1.2 talks about the WICOS International Advisory Group, um, and I understand that's being replaced by the uh, GHSF Advisory Council. I don't know whether we need to make that clear in the document or not. But, uh, Thanks, Tony. We'll do that. And we'll make it so that everyone can see clearly what that is. Other comments? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Netherlands, sorry. <laughs> My eyes are really terrible, so. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. I would like to uh, have a comment on urges under point four that I, for the expert group. On, on, uh, on gender balance. The, the word balance is used here, and to be in line with other documents in this issue, is used equality. Maybe I would like to recommend to consider to, that, that word to use it again to be in line in with, in with the other documents. Gender equality. But that's, that's. So I'm qu quite happy with this. Thank you. Any other points here? Okay, well, like I say, we'll come back to this later in the afternoon. What I'd like to do at this point um, is, is take a break, but just a sec.